In the previous video, if you watched that, my first attempt to solve 817, and this was actually in the original PDF solution that I had posted, we got down to this equation here for the behavior of the circuit. If you remember, after the switch changed, what we ended up with was a source-free RLC series circuit. And so we just applied Kirchhoff's voltage law all the way around there. This ended up being the voltage for the resistor. This ended up being the voltage for the inductor. And then we had V of T for the voltage across the capacitor. And in the previous video, since this was already in terms of I, this was already in terms of I, what I did was I just solved for V um, in terms of I, plug that in, solve for I, and then went through this roundabout way to get back to V using integration and all that. There's actually a much more direct way. What I can do here is if I remember that the current, and that's going to be the current through the capacitor, current through the inductor, current through the resistor, since we're all in series there together, it's all going to be the same. But for a capacitor, I is equal to C dV dt. And so if I want to solve for V, why don't I go ahead and convert my I here into V just by subbing in C dV dt. And then my di dt is just going to be the derivative of this. And so what do I get here? I have 10 ohms, and this is going to be um, I, that's just C dV dt, plus 0.25 henrys times C second order derivative of V with respect to T plus V equals zero. So now I've got my differential equation just in terms of V. That's very convenient because ultimately V is what I'm trying to solve for. So if I go ahead and multiply these components together, take that, multiply by 100, and convert it using a Laplace transform, I get S squared plus 40S plus 100 equals zero. As it turns out, that's the same exact Laplace transform that we got when we were dealing with the current realm. No real big difference there. Um, and so we end up with the same S value. So we get negative 20 plus or minus 10 square root of three. And, but the reason this is convenient is now we can write V in this format here. We don't have to go through I and then integrate it. So we can go directly into V of T is equal to A1E to the negative 20. In this case, I'm going to put minus 10 square root of 3 here, negative 20 plus um, 10 square root of 3 over here. And now I need to solve for A1 and A2. I know this is the general form because I have negative real non-repeated roots. And so this means that I'm over damped. This is my general form right here. Now, I can go ahead and plug in zero, and if you remember in the previous video, we determined that the voltage at T equals zero was in fact 20 volts, so we can go ahead and plug in zero here, and that's going to equal A1 times E to the zero, or just A1 plus A2 E to the zero right there, and so A1 plus A2 is going to be equal to 20 volts. Now, the other thing that we need to figure out is what is dV dt at zero? Well, that's found by looking at the current initially. And if you remember, we looked at the initial current through the inductor, and we know that that didn't change instantaneously. And so we know the initial current through the RLC circuit was zero amps. And so, therefore, we know that since um, the original current, I, through the capacitor, through the inductor, through the resistor was zero. I can again go back to I equals C dV dt. The inductor current is the same as the capacitor current, so therefore IC equals C dV dt. And since IC is zero and I have a non-zero capacitance, that means dV dt at zero was also zero. So since dV dt at zero is zero, Let's go ahead and find dV dt using this. And so this is just going to be S1a e to the S1t plus S2a e to the S2t. And so we can solve that on down, and we get 0 is equal to S1a e to the 0. It's just S1a plus S2a e to the 0. And so here, this is our S1. This is our S2. And so we can ultimately find this. Now, if we go back to our equation from above, we found that 20 equals A1 plus A2. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in. A1 is going to equal 20 minus A2. So for every A1 that I have, I'm going to go ahead and plug in a 20 minus A2. So I get here's my S1 times 20 minus A2. Here's my S2 times 
this was just a2. So now I've got an equation. Um, this should be 0 equals. And so 0 is equal to, if I multiply all this out, solve ultimately for a2, I get that a2 equals 20 over square root of 3 plus 10. And therefore, since a1 is equal to 20 minus a2, that means that a1 is equal to 10 minus 20 over square root of 3. So now I've got my a1, I've got my a2, and so I didn't even have to use MATLAB, didn't have to use matrices at all on this. And so now, if you look along the right-hand side of this, let me see if I can rotate this image um, and see if we can show that. I'll rotate it clockwise across the top right here. This is our general form solution. V of t is equal to 10 minus 20 over root 3 e to the negative 20 minus 10 square root of 3, that whole quantity times t, plus 20 over square root of t plus 10, that whole quantity times e to the negative 20 plus 10 square root of 3 times t. And so this is a lot cleaner to see than things out to multiple decimal places. It's a lot easier to see where those values come from. You don't have to worry about MATLAB. You don't have to worry about doing another integral. And I think this is just a lot cleaner solution. So hopefully this makes it a lot easier to understand how to solve for V of T. But as you've seen, both methods should work just fine and get you the same result. All right.